Okay, what's up my fellow speedsters? This is Lord Speed, Shaw Speed Force, and today we're with an, we are here back with another video. Today's a different kind of video though. It's another school project. Um, the first time you guys are seeing this is probably unedited because I don't have time to edit this and turn it in at the same time. So you guys are going to see an edited version of this next week and for you watch if you watch the original and the edited version it's probably redundant because it's the same footage but today we're here with my stem one school project it's a reverse engineering project uh basically i get to choose anything and kind of explain how it works and how it's engineered and uh i was excited to do this because we either had a choice to present it or make a video and you know your boys been making videos since 2019 so uh yeah you the viewer the subscriber watching a school project and also my teachers watching this to grade it um so yeah let's just hop straight on in uh reverse engineering i'm decided to do a ps4 controller these two controllers one is actually my little brother's now but these are the two controllers that i used for like the entirety of the channel you know going back to my old channel playing mk11 and even like reacting or share factory uh but since i don't use the ps4 anymore i gave i gave one away but we have the controllers here and I already took out the screws off of one so we're actually going to be opening up one controller and leaving one intact just so you guys have a you know a basic idea of what it looks like when it's together obviously gamers <laughs> obviously gamers know um what the controller looks like i hate i hate making videos and not editing it because i get to cut out weird stuff that's happening but yeah you guys are just seeing the raw footage like what i did with the um the Beowulf review, which you guys will also be seeing next week. But I also have a set of questions here that I have to answer to get my grade and to actually analyze, um, you know, the product here. So uh, this part is like the first chapter is prediction. So what is the purpose of this product? Obviously, the purpose of a PS4 controller is to be able to control the PS4, you know, play the video games that you're using and, you know, go through the menu. Simple stuff. Uh, how does it work? How does it work? So obviously, it's electrically powered, but like every other device but it has a bluetooth connection it actually connects to the um, ps4 also connects other things like a phone a tablet i don't know why you would do that but yeah it goes to, it connects to the ps4 through a wireless connection or wired and it kind of just sends messages to the ps4 like a remote how like with a tv uh what market was this designed to appeal to gamers people that spend a whole bunch of money on video games i guess you could have a ps4 and not have games but that would be weird to spend like $400 on a console and not get any games for it. But what? Uh, next question. List some of the design objectives. Weight, shape, color, etc. Obviously, mine is modified. Uh, this used to just be like a red one. But uh, you see, this is this outside is called a shell. Took apart and I mixed it together to do red and black because that's my favorite color combo. So that's the color. Weight. This is lightweight. I would say this is probably like less than one pound. Like... I'm pretty sure newborn babies could lift this up and it would be no big deal. Um, shape. What, what are we going to say this is shape of? It's kind of like a rectangle with like added ovals at the bottom. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's the weight, shape, color. Um, obviously, you know, you have all these different components and buttons like the bumpers, the triggers, and also the D-pad and then like the normal buttons. Uh, this I forget what this is called actually You know if I was editing I could have just put it at the top, but <laughs> Raw footage. I can't do that um, List some of the constraints that may be influenced with the de uh, constraints that may have influenced the design uh, Material so what are some of the constraints of the ps4 controller? Uh, obviously, there's no constraints when you first buy it, but one thing I hated about the ps4 uh, like as I had it for longer is there's a lot of gaps in between this because of the it's like plastic that's like fused together so you see all these gaps dust actually gets in the gaps and it makes the controller dirty which actually causes stick drift and stick drift is actually when you're playing a video game and the stick starts moving by itself i actually haven't had that problem with the ps5 so far i know that's an issue that some people have but i haven't had the issue so far with the ps5 which i'm grateful for because ps4 my god like the gaps right here, gaps right here, dust gets in. And this is actually how I learned how to open it up is because, um, you know, I had to open it up to clean it. Okay, now we're on to chapter two, observation. Uh, how do you think it works? Well, 
I think I think that's the same thing, but we'll say it. Um, it works, you know, by being powered because you have to charge it. You have to plug it into the PS5 or P well, it's PS4 controller. You have to plug it into the PS4, uh, you know, give it some juice. And then, you know, you have all these. So basically, when, you, when I open it up, you guys are going to see it. Um, but there's actually like a, a grid inside of here that um, has all these different pads on it. So like when you're pressing square, when you're pressing X, when you're pressing a start button, the, the um, buttons actually press on the pad that sends an electrical signal into the grid that uses the Bluetooth connection to send it back to the PS4. So it's pretty cool. I, I sounded smart there. I don't know if I'm actually smart. But that's just the way it works with my goober brain. Um, how does it meet design objectives overall? I mean, it's good. It's better than the PS3 controller. Uh, I would say it meets objectives uh, because the PS3 controller is, it was a good controller at the time, but then I used the 360 controller. You know, editing, I'll show PNGs of these different controllers, but I feel like the PS4 is good overall because it upgrades the PS3 controller and feels better to hold. But the PS5 is just way better, so I do feel like I'm like devolving when I'm holding this, but it is good at its job for like a 2013 console. Um, it gets the job done, it feels good in your hands, you know, I feel like I could play good, play good at certain video games. But the stick drift again, I don't know, these controllers are able to break very easily too. Um, uh, what's the next question? How does it mean, uh, why is it designed the way it is? So controllers all basically look the same. Sometimes the shape changes, the rectangle up here changes, and the size of the shell changes, and the shell is the outside. But all controllers since the dawn of time, besides the Super Nintendo back in the day, and even the Sega, uh, which I played as a kid, um, they were a little different. But as we started to get to, you know, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, the original Xbox, we started to see controllers like this that have this rectangle and then have the parts where you can hold your hands. And these are for your hands, to, you know, like grip on. So that's the reason why it's like that, because they know it's for gamers that are going to be gripping onto the controller. Okay, chapter three, disassemble. If you hear smacking in the background, that's because um, my dog is chewing stuff. But obviously, you can see here, this is the one that doesn't have the screws in it. Okay, let's disassemble it. Ooh, okay. So if I remember correctly, yeah, there's 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 tape right there. It's not tape. It's like it's like plastic that has wiring in it that connects the back. Because right here, there's actually a light for. So I'm going to show you guys, there's a light right here um, from when the PS4 controller is on. Um, and I actually have to disconnect that uh, from that piece. Also, I'm not going to reassemble it just because I have another one. So you guys can keep, you know, that basic image in your head. I'm going to do like a side by side maybe. But yeah, obviously, I just disconnected that from the back. This is the back shell. Um... What we can see here, this is where the triggers are held. Obviously, one of the triggers came off and it's still right here. But this is the charging port. This is how the power comes into the system. And this is also the light that shows when your thing is on and when it is charging. So it's basically just like a message system. Uh, okay, so how does it actually work? So you see here, this is the grid that I was talking about. It's in the controller. We can actually... We don't want to damage the battery because the battery is what holds the power and allows the controller to work. But, uh, man. let me disassemble it on screen. This would be much easier if I was editing this because I could just do like a little jump cut. Because you have to do it a certain way so you don't snap anything. Because if you snap something, it's, it's going to be hard to get it back into place. And then when you do fix it, you're going to hear rumbling when you're playing with the controller. Okay. How do I get this part off? Dang it. I haven't done this in a long time, you guys couldn't tell. <laughs> uh, it's been a long time since I had to clean the controller. Because I used to have to clean these all the time, but I stopped doing that since I stopped using these. Ooh, okay. I'm just trying to get the final piece off. 
old me knew how to do this like i used to be able to do it like really fast i used to just be able to open it real quick okay. it's this part that's stuck i think i maybe snapped it in here too hard the last time i cleaned it Ooh, i almost dropped my computer I figured out why it wasn't coming out. It's because I forgot to... I have to unscrew this part. So there's a screw right here. Where the battery holder... There's a screw that doesn't allow it to move. So we're going to do that. Maybe it's this screw... screw holding everything in place okay sorry about that long dragged out scene of me struggling i might have to cut that out and i'll leave it in in the editing scene you know i could just do like a little montage of me struggling so if you guys saw a jump cut that was like the only piece of editing in this non-edited version but this is the controller um without the shell uh so it's saying how does it actually work so this is how, what I was talking about was, obviously I already had experience with this. This is the sensors that the buttons press. So right here, we see the buttons, and this is what it looks like on the back. So these little rubber parts click onto here and send the signals, which travels through all the wires. Um, and this battery is what powers all these wires. And then, you know, the Bluetooth connection, the wireless connection, then travels back to the PS4 and tells you what to do in the game or in the menu. Uh, how was it made? Um, I don't know what kind of jokes I can make because this is a school project, but most likely this is made from child labor in other countries. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's made out of plastic. We have some metal here. So, actually, the metal right here. Um, and the sides of the controller are actually uh, balanced. So this is to keep the different parts of the controller balanced. And these are the sticks. This is what allows you to move and change your camera view in different games. Obviously, the sticks do different things in different games like Fortnite, Mortal Kombat, two different things that the sticks do. But it's, you know, it's a general thing. The controller usually does the same thing. Um, yeah, that's how it's actually made. How many parts? Oh, man, this is crazy. Because my last reverse, reverse engineering projects... Uh, I did like a tennis ball, and uh, I think I did like a charger cord, and those didn't have that many components, um, obviously. But if, if we were to count this, this probably has like, I don't know. So we have the little grid here, the power source. We have this little plastic sheath right here, which also has grid work um, that has the wiring. Uh, and then we also have the triggers. We have the case that just connects everything. We have the battery pack. We have the metal balance beams uh, on the side. Why do I say beams like this is a building? Uh, we have the back shell or well, front shell with all the different buttons. So I'm going to say it at least has 10 because that would be a lot to count over. And I don't know exactly, you know, which parts we should count, which parts we shouldn't because, you know, not a electrical or, you know, hardware engineer. Uh, so uh, how many moving parts? That's easy. So. When this is all said and done, you know, with the normal controller, we have the two bumpers at the top, so that's two. We got the triggers, that's two, so we got four already. We got the D-pad, that's four different buttons, but technically this is all one set. Um, obviously, you can see here, um, the this, this rubber piece, the D-pad um, is actually all one piece that just moves side to side. So that's actually one piece, but it's four different moving parts. Uh, so we're at eight. It's eight, but it could you could just say five, but we're going to say eight. Uh, we have the sticks that move, so we're at ten. And then all of these are actually four different pieces, the uh, shape, you know, the buttons. 
So we got 2, 4, 8, 10, 14. Uh, then this, this is uh, this is like a sensor that you do in certain games. So this is 15. And then we got the two sticks, uh, <laughs> 17, and then, you know, the home button. So we got 18 different moving parts, which are just like the different buttons that allow you to do the different things on your console. Um, and what is the other part? Any surprises? No surprises from me right now since I've done this like in 2020 and 2021. I took apart this controller. But what was I surprised about in the beginning? Uh, I was surprised about just the way that this thing looks and like how fragile it feels like how much the shell actually like gives how much like support it actually gives to the controller because without it I mean that might be common sense but without it it just seems like easily breakable it seems like it's not even like well put together really um, it just looks like very weird and even seeing these metal things in here that keep the controller balanced on the different sides that was like weird to me. Because uh, obviously you see right here, um, it's heavier on this side than this side. And that's just to make it where it's not like heavy while you're moving the controller around. Uh, so yeah, I was just surprised, I guess, to see the different components such as like this, the, you know, the tape piece connecting the controller together. And like how difficult it actually was to get into the controller without breaking it. Okay, so uh, next chapter, analyze. Carefully examine and analyze subsystems. Um, I think we've been doing that. So again, uh, I can't really put a sketch up. I'll do that in the edited version, but I can't really do that here. So this is just what it looks like. This is the PS4 controller when you strip it down to bare bones. I could strip it down even farther, but I don't want to be sitting here that much longer. So here, wrap. And this is the shell. And again, for a reminder, this is what it looks like when it's all put together, all said and done. This is what it looks like. So, um, and then a next chapter, because that one only had one question. Uh, carefully reassemble the product. Uh, we would be here for a little bit, but that would be like an extra three minutes of time. So, this is why I had the second controller, to keep in mind what it already looks like all said and done. So... Yeah, this is the controller all put together. Operate the device and record observation by performance in terms of functionality, operational. Uh, I don't know what the other word is, and projected durability. So I already spoke about his durability. I have, I've had, uh, I've had these controllers since like 2020 and 2021 because uh, I got one controller in 2020 with the PS4, then I bought another one, and then I kind of like fused the controllers and like took it apart, mishmashed it so they could be red and black. So uh, these controllers have lasted like two to three years again i just had to clean them through due to stick drift and uh they actually lasted better than the ps4 console so i'll say durability is good um i guess if you want to see like observations of me using it like <laughs> i my past videos my past videos i mean the controller's not damaged it's been the same so, and I've already taken it apart before. So I've already taken it apart and put it back together. Uh, then you find any refinements that may that might enhance the product's usefulness. So, uh, what might enhance the product's usefulness? Just the PS5 controller in general. I'm just going to name one feature that's really cool. The haptic feedback triggers. Those are really cool. The triggers like have locks on them, so it actually could become harder. Um, when you're doing certain like games and stuff, you can actually your the controller vibrates, so you kind of can feel what's happening in the game. And the triggers also could like have resistance to your fingers, so that you can actually feel the resistance that the character's feeling in the game certain times. So uh, I guess that's one refinement the PS4 controller could have, which we saw as an upgrade for the PS5 controller, which I think is really cool. Again, that's not any slack against the PS4 controller. That's just me bringing out something that's been upgraded. Uh, in a future model of this, you know, dual shock controller. Uh, upgrades and changes. Uh, I think the PS5 controller uh, is a little bit more tight, like tightly put together. So I do like how it doesn't get like a whole bunch of dust in there and I need to clean it all the time. Uh, like I did with these controllers. So that was a good refinement to me. Also the shape of the PS5 controller, it's not as wide out. It's kind of like closer together with longer, you know, uh, handles. So I think I think if you just look at the PS5 controller, it's just a better DualShock uh, PS PlayStation controller. So I'm tired of saying controller. Um, I'm done. You guys will be seeing an edited version of this video coming soon. Um, you guys will be seeing edited content next week. I'll be coming back officially next week. 
uh, you know, with streams and making more videos. I just wanted to change change it up for this school uh, project because usually I'm in the soundproofing room, the closet, but I just wanted to do a little bedroom video. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this again. It is, it was long. It probably had a lot of like dead space and a lot of dead time um, because I just couldn't uh, keep up with, you know, uploading this and taking like four hours to edit it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I got a good grade on it. Uh, we analyzed the PS4 controllers just to end out. This is what we have. Uh, on the way out, don't forget to strike the like button, share and subscribe. We just got previous videos on the channel. Check the channel to subscribe to. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I don't know what the next school project's gonna be, but the next video, the next video I make is probably gonna be Find Out to Freddy's Night 5. I'll see you guys in the next one.